of the thieves and rekindling the fire. Let it burn. I don't know how many of you are excited about being here tonight. But just clap your hands. Come and stand to your feet. Come and open up your mouth. Give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Come and give the Lord some praise. Come and give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Our God is an awesome God. Our God is a great God. Tell somebody you're in the right place at the right time. We are here to rekindle king the fire. We are here to let it burn. We are here to ignite the fire of the Holy Ghost. And wherever the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty. Wherever the presence of the Lord is, there is deliverance. Wherever the presence of the Lord is, there is freedom. Wherever the presence of the Lord is, miracles will occur. Hallelujah. Can somebody call the name Jesus? Hallelujah. 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 I believe in one truth. And that truth is, is that God dwells in the praises of his people. Don't allow the enemy to cause you to be a dummy. We are Pentecostal. So it's a time for you to open up your mouth. It's a time for you to clap your hands. It's a time for you to dance. It's a time for you to shout because God dwells in the praises of his people. Hallelujah. 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 And I welcome you tonight into the presence of Jehovah God. There is no better place. If you're expecting something of God tonight, just tell a neighbor, I'm expecting something great of God. And I want you to have a spirit of expectancy as well. Because God is up to something. Your miracle is in this place. Your healing is in this place. Your freedom, your deliverance is in this place. Hallelujah. At this time, I'm going to welcome Pastor Henry James to open us in prayer. Please clap your hands, make welcome. Hallelujah. Pentecostal to the bone. That's who we are. Bless the Lord. I declare tonight that this house is a filling station of God. A filling station of God's kingdom. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. This kingdom, this filling station fills, my friends, the needs of those who are faint at heart. Praise God Almighty. Hallelujah. Hey, Jesus, even though the heart might only be able to muster hey, a, a stuttering praise to the God who answers by fire. And here we are tonight. Praise the name of the Lord. We give God praise. Amen. We lift up our voices to the Lord, eternal Father and God, Lord of heaven and earth, creator of all things. Lord, you are the master of this universe. We acknowledge your reign. We acknowledge your sovereignty. We acknowledge that you reign supreme. Your word says, hallelujah, from one generation to the other shall praise your name. Hallelujah, Jesus, from one generation to the other. Thou art God, so we worship, we praise, we adore you tonight, God, as we welcome your holy presence in this house. Lord God, first of all, we recognize that we need to get some things out of the way. We recognize that we need to prepare this place for the King of Kings. And so, dear God, we reach for the blood of sprinkling, the blood of consecration. We cleanse this room. We cleanse the atmosphere. We commit this place into the worship and praise of Almighty God. We welcome the King of Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Who is the King of Glory? Who is the King of Glory? The Lord of hosts. The Lord Almighty. Hallelujah. Strong in battle and mighty to deliver. We serve the living and true God of all ages. You are indeed Yahweh. So Father God, I pray in 
in Jesus' name that you will bless our moderator. I pray that you bless, hallelujah, the musicians, the song leaders, God. We pray that you will bless every singer here tonight, the audience, my Father. Bless, Lord, our delegates. Bless our prime minister. Bless everyone here on these grounds, Lord. Let none escape the presence of Almighty God. Let none escape the fire of God. Let none escape. Hallelujah. Let your name be glorified, Lord God. And without no uncertain terms, I pray, God, as we label to say, when it all comes to the end, that was good for us to have been in the house of the Lord. Ah, oh, God, so we say praise to the Holy Ghost. Praise to the Son. Praise to the Father. Be thou glorified in this house. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. To you be all the glory, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Come on, clap your hand one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I heard the psalmist sing. I was glad when the saying unto me, come, let us go into the house. Of the Lord. At this time, we are going to await our national anthem from Gifts and Marriage Right. I invite you to give standing while she comes tonight and play us the national anthem. Can you put your hands together for her as she comes? Come on, put your hands together for gift, indeed a gifted, gifted promise. May the Lord God bless gift with her gift. Amen. At this time, I'm inviting you to take your seat as I invite a great man of God, Bishop 
Wendell Davis, who will now give us the official welcoming and opening remarks for this convention. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you very much, Giff. Thank you very much. The rights. See Minister Ricky Wright down there all smiling and happy and proud. Yeah, we are proud of her too. That's she's ours, all of us. Um, so Prime Minister, Dr. Yonobu Ralph Gonsalves, Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, um, Administrator of St. Lucia, we're happy to have you too, but Bishop Ishmael Charles and I, I'm just gonna just go there say Bishop Ishmael Charles and Lady Charles and and Dr. Smith, Bishop Steve Smith, our Administrative Bishop of New York, um, Dr. Ming, um, our Strategic Director across the Caribbean, but also one who holds the, the portfolio of Immig Chief Immigration Person in Bermuda. So if you have to go to Bermuda, she's the one you, has to, you have to contend with, okay? And all, all of you here tonight is just a, a joy and a thrill, and I'm excited to be here tonight. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. I think it's about one year ago that we gathered here for our 2023 national convention. And what an awesome time we had. What an awesome time we had in the presence of God. As we magnified, we lift up the name of Jesus, we dance, and we allowed our souls to be ministered to, and we allow ourselves to become instruments in the hand of Almighty God. One year had passed, and we are back here again. There have been, been difficult times, there have been times of sorrow, times of pain, times of tragedies, times of hardship, but there have been times of success and, and joy and happiness because Jehovah God had been good to us and he will continue to be good to us. I think one songwriter say, amidst the changing scenes of life, God remains good, he remains God. So put your hands together for Jesus, I think it's in order, put your hands together for him. And my brothers and my sisters and my friends and those of you who have joined us on Facebook, those of you who have joined us on YouTube and NBC Radio audience who is with us tonight also, we are happy to have you and I welcome you to be with us tonight. Whether you be in Barbados, whether you be in Bermuda, whether you be across the Caribbean, in New York, wherever you are listening to us from, we welcome you. We are here on the team this week, this weekend of rekindle the fire, let it burn. Because the harvest, there's a harvest to be reaped. Rekindle the fire and let it burn. Because there's a harvest to be reaped. We are here tonight, as I think the moderator said, or the apostle, Pastor James, who prayed, said, this is like a filling station. We are here so that we'll be empowered to go to be what God wants us to be. In the spirit of obedience and trust in Almighty God, and as our beautiful national anthem said, whatever the future brings, our faith will see us through. And peace, may peace reign from shore to shore. And Jehovah God bless and keep us through. So I welcome you here tonight. I welcome you to start this weekend, tomorrow's night and Friday night and Saturday in our prayer breakfast and Sunday as we bring the curtain down on convention 2024. And 2024 is also our 84th year as an incorporated body here in this country. God had been good to us and we are looking forward for great things from the hands of Almighty God. Like I would have said at another time, other organizations have started 84 years ago and they're no longer around. But 84 years of ups and downs, hills and valleys, shadows and bright lights and all kind of situation, the New Testament Church of God remains strong. The New Testament Church of God continues to be led by the Spirit of God, led by the grace of God, in the power of God. And so we're here tonight to rekindle the fire and let it burn those fires that have gone down and and we have allowed them to become cold and, and the ashes fall in the, fi the fireplace. We are here tonight and this weekend to rekindle the fire and let it burn. So as the administrative bishop of the New Testament Church of God, St. Vincent and the Grenadines and St. Lucia. Yes, Pastor Budu, still St. Lucia. When July, August come, it will, it will no longer be St. Vincent and the Grenadines and St. Lucia. St. Lucia will be on its own and we'll be on our own as sisters walking this walk together. But we now, as the Administrative Bishop of the New Testament Church of God, St. Vincent and the Grenadines and St. Lucia, I declare this convention open 
for the glory and the honor of Almighty God and for the conducting of any business that would continue to exalt the name of Jesus Christ for his glory, grace, and his honor. God bless you. Come on, put your hands together for our administrative bishop, Bishop Wendell Davis. Tonight, I want to encourage you as we wait on the scripture reading tonight that will be taken by Bernadette, Sister Bernadette Myers from the Vermont Church. I want to encourage us to allow the Lord to have his way. Anybody hear me? Amen. Allow the Lord to have his way because his way is the only way, the best way, the right way. Amen. When you allow God to have his way, you are setting yourself up for something great. And something great is about to happen for you. Put your hands together and God bless you. Come, Sister Bell. Good night, everyone. May we all stand for the reading of the word, please. The scripture reading tonight is taken from 1 Kings, chapter 18, from verse 29 on to verse 33. Here begin it. And it came to pass... When midday was past, and they prophesied unto the time of the prophesied unto the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that there were neither voice nor any answer, nor any that regarded. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones, according to the number of tribes of the son of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar, as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put in the wood in order, and cut the bullock into pieces, and laid him on the wood, and said, Fill four barrels of water, and pour it on the bond sacrifice, and on the wood. This is the word of the Lord. To God. Tonight as we place the wood on the altar, I invite you to take your seats. As we await our dancers, our national dance ministry, celebration of praise. Put your hands together for them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's just enjoy the presence of the Lord right now. Oh, we love you, Lord. We bless you.
Come on, put your hands together for our national dancers. Hallelujah. 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 Our God is a consuming fire. We're declaring more fire over our lives. Come on, put your hands together for God. The more of the fire of the Lord we carry is the more we begin to function the way he wants us to function. And let that be the desire for your heart tonight as we would have seen our national dancers celebrating the Lord in dance. I'm so touched and I'm so blessed. At this time, we're preparing ourselves for worship. And I want to say to us as we prepare ourselves, as we welcome the worship team, worship is not difficult for somebody who has fire. So can I tell somebody, let it burn. If somebody distracted you, just tell them, please, excuse me for this moment. But let it burn. Somebody, I wish that somebody's soul can catch fire. Let somebody be called on fire tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Can this place now be ignited with the fire of the Holy Ghost? Come on, stand to your feet. Allow the fire of the Lord to burn. As you open up your spirit, as you open up your mouth, as you worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, let the fire of the Lord burn. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Tonight's theme is that we're going to be putting the wood in place. Bless the Lord. We're going to put God back in his rightful place tonight. Bless the name of Jesus tonight. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
of Jesus. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Back to the heart of worship tonight where it's all about God tonight. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. When the music fades and all is
say pan them. Come on, say pan them, 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 pan them. All you people, yes, the Lord. You may have your seats. Yes, the Lord. I love the enthusiasm. I have learned that anything you do for God, do it with all your heart. Not only that, do it just for Him. With no other agenda. Praise God. I, it's my responsibility to raise the offering tonight. And I went about looking at all the principles of giving, Bishop. Indeed, that I'm not the preacher. So someone who is wiser than me said, why don't you tell them a story? And then I remembered yesterday I was sharing with Bishop Smith. That while I was in school a few years ago, I was a teenager, <laughs> that I had an experience that brought out all the principles of giving. You know, I was in school and the Holy Spirit said to me, Pastor Gowie, you see that one five dollars you have in your pocket? I want you to give it to that person, another classmate. And being a good Christian that I am, I said, God, no. And then I started to come up with some good reasons not to give. I said she don't need the money because Bishop Charles, she was Caucasian. And PM, I thought Caucasian people have more money than black people. So I said, well, I have literally one five dollars in my name. And here's God telling me to give it. But the Holy Spirit kept impressing on me, give her the money. And I said, God gave us wisdom. I have no money to pay to go home. How am I getting home? And he keep insisting, give her the money. So then I said, ah. Oh. <laughs> I have to do it. But I can't do it grudgingly. So fix my mind, God. 
Because you said when you give, give cheerfully. And I took the five dollars and I gave it to her. She said, thanks. I don't know why she needed or needed five dollars. She never told me. I never asked. And I walked away. My mom and dad are here. This is the first time they're hearing this story. My dad used to send me once per month my allowance. For I was living in Kingston. Most of you know I am from Chateaubelle. It wasn't time yet to receive the allowance. But before the end of the day, I received an envelope from my dad with much more than $5 in it. <laughs> to God be the glory. You see, God knows more than we do. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't even say that. There's no comparison. Now I want you to take your gift out. Bishop may not like what I'm about to say, but if you're going to do it half-heartedly, keep your money. Amen. He said he like it, so good. I'm on good ground. I'm on good ground. No, because you're not going to help yourself. If you're going to think, well, them, they want me money. Keep your money. But if you bring an offering to the Lord as an act of thanksgiving, as gratitude for his goodness towards you, then by all means, your gift, and he will receive it. Let's stand as we ask God's blessings on the gifts that we have brought. Hallelujah. Father, you who searches the heart, we bring our gifts to you. We ask that you'd receive them. We ask that they would be, O oh God, pleasing in your sight. And we pray that you will multiply. You took five loaves and two fishes and fed thousands. We are confident that you are still the same. That you have not changed. That you are God all by yourself. I pray right now for a special blessing on those who give out of obedience, who give out of gratitude, who give, oh God, cheerfully. I pray, as you have said in your word, that you would open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. For it is more blessed to give than to receive. I thank you, God, for your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. We're going to give unto the Lord tonight. are anointed, stop there, and if your feet are anointed, stop there, and if you under the blood, give me a holy ghost, shout, Woo! if your hands are anointed, clap there, and if your feet are anointed, stop there, and if you're under the blood, under the blood, under the blood, I am a From me, I am anointed and appointed. I'm a mighty warrior in God's army. I'm taking back my joy, back. back my peace, back. back my will, 
and my health I'm taking everything he stole from me Everything he took from my family I'm taking back my dance, back. back my shout Take it back. For all those years he tried to shut my mouth I am anointed and appointed I'm a mighty warrior in God's name Taking back my joy, Take it back. back my peace, Take it back. back my will, Take it back. and my health. I'm taking everything he stole from me, everything he took from my family. I'm taking back my dance Take it back. and back my shout. Take it back. For all those years he tried to shut my mouth, I am anointed and appointed. I am anointed to put the enemy under my feet. I am anointed, moving forward, no more defeat. I'm raging war on the enemy, taking back what was stolen from me. I am anointed and appointed. I'm a mighty warrior in God's army. I am anointed to put the enemy under my feet. I am anointed, moving forward, no more defeat. I'm rich and warm. Of the enemy, taking back what was stolen from me. I am anointed and appointed. I'm a mighty warrior in God's army. I'm wretched war on the enemy, taking back what was stolen from me. I am anointed and appointed. Hallelujah. As we stand up and wait on our national choir, can we put our hands together for our national choir? Come on, put your anointed hands together. We are not going to sit back and allow the devil to take what belongs to us. God has given us power and the word of God teaches us according to the power that worketh in us. The power of God abides in his people. So we put, please put your hands together as we welcome our national choir. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, keep clapping your hands. Every time you clap your hands, you confuse the devil. Every time you clap your hands, you confuse the devil. Come on. Praise is an instrument of war. Hallelujah. 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 We give God praise and glory. We give God all the honor in this place to him belong. All glory, praise, and honor. Hallelujah, hallelujah. As the choir prepares themselves to bless our hearts, I'm encouraging you to unlock the doors of your heart and allow the Lord to speak to you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. This evening would like to bless your heart with this song. After many years of coming here and we're celebrating 84th anniversary. And we want to give God the praise and the glory that he so deserved. Generation after generation, God has been blessing us. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Blessed be the name of Jesus. My soul needs reminded you're still good. You're so good. In the waiting when my heart is confused and the trusting when my hope is lost and in the heart promise you're still good you're so good cause I have to hold up these years you're still good you're so good cause I have to hold Somebody right here worship the Lord. Hallelujah. In the morning. Somebody say you're still good. You're so good. In the way that yeah. And in the harvest. And I'm holding. You're still good. You're still good. You're so good. You're so good. Cause after all, after all these years, can somebody testify and see you? You're so good. You're so good. Cause after all these years, after all these years, you're still, you're still.
awesome God. Have any worshipers in here? You're a God. You're a God. Yes. 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 Somebody put a hand together. Come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on, he's been good. Come on, if God has been good, come on, raise your voice. Come on, give him a praise. Hallelujah. After all these years. After all these years. After all these years, God has been good.
Can somebody testify? Look at somebody and say, God has been so good. God has been so good. Even when we are no good, God has still been good. Even when we fail, God has still been good. Even when we are not who we are supposed to be, God has still been good. Hallelujah. Somebody say, let the fire burn. Let the fire burn. The Bible said the goodness of God will lead men to repentance. Repentance is never a negative message, but one that brings us into covenantal blessing with God. Oh, high five your neighbor, say God has been good. We are now waiting from our general overseer, Bishop Timothy Hill. His greetings. Bless the Lord. Come on, somebody clap your hand one more time. I feel the fire of God up in here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy On behalf of the Church of God International Executive Committee, I want to greet everyone who has gathered for the New Testament Church of God Convention in St. Vincent, the Grenadines, and St. Lucia. As you gather on April the 10th through the 14th of 2024, I especially want to greet Bishop Byron Wendell Davis and First Lady Eleanor Davis, the National Overseer, and also Bishop Ishmael Charles, the Caribbean Field Director, Bishop Kenroy Burke, Regional Superintendent, and I want to commend all of you as you gather under the theme, rekindle the fire, let it burn. I so regret that I'm not able to be there personally because I've always enjoyed being in your meeting. And I believe that the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit is going to meet with you in a powerful and a very significant way as you gather under this theme. And my prayer for you is that the fire of Pentecost will burn and that when this meeting has come to a conclusion, you will be able to say it was good to have been in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Bishop Davis and all of the leaders. May God bless you and give you a wonderful meeting in God's presence. God bless. you call me after the general overstep. I give a chance to breathe. I want to welcome Bishop Davis who will bring the man of God. Put hands together as we bring back Bishop Davis. Amen. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not Minister Ellen, not him. <laughs> amen, amen. But it's such a joy. It's such a joy. And I I know uh, Bishop, Bishop, Bishop um, Nolan James came after, but I just want to ask you to put your hands together one more time for that the choir. And the choir director. Such passion, such anointing, such realness. Hallelujah. And I remember telling them today in the chat, sending chat that, told them in the chat today that Bishop Charles, that we don't want performance. We want ministry. We want anointing. And that's what we saw tonight manifested. Thank you so very much. So very much. Where's the, where's the young man that led? Where is he? Amen. Stay under the anointing. Stay with the anointing. I, I'm not a prophet, but God has great things in store for you. Walk before God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are privileged to have our Prime Minister with us tonight. Um, we should have been having our stool that is out of state, our opposition leader. We hope that he could join us before the week is finished because I've spoken to one of his members and he promised that somebody's going to be here sometime during the course of this week. But tonight we have our Prime Minister. We're going to just ask him to come and greet. You all right, sir? Just come and greet us. You're not, you're not greeting us.
Thank you very much, my dear brother Wendell, and all the members of the clergy who are here, and their spouses, and special invited guests, and all the pilgrims who are here at this amazing opening of your convention. I'm very happy to be here with you. I've had a I had a long day today, starting at four o'clock this morning, and, uh, but I had to be here. And I'm gonna try to see if I can be, to rearrange my schedule, because I noticed that my, my brother is not really preaching tonight, he's preaching on Sunday. I've been, I've, been, I've been following the schedule, you know. <laughs> I've been following the schedule. And I would see if I could get there. Because he always inspires. I know, I don't know my brother from New York, but I know originally from Jamaica. Where in Jamaica? Ah. I, I, you, I know St. Elizabeth very well. I know St. Elizabeth very well. You know, I, I said just now that Bishop Charles inspires, and so too my brother Wendell Davis. But leadership is not just about inspiration. In a sense, to inspire is important as it is, it is less significant than something else which is more difficult to do as a leader. And I've watched them over the years. To be a good leader, among other things, you're required to draw out of people, not just to put in by sense of inspiring, but to draw out of people whom you are leading what is good and noble and of high quality in them. And often, often to draw out of them that which they do not yet understand, that they possess, that goodness, nobility, or high quality. I think that's something which is very important. And... Um, of course, I know these brothers quite well, and it is as though, in the words of Jeremiah, that the good Lord knew them in the womb. He set them apart. He sanctified them. And he has proclaimed them prophets to all the nations. As every one of us here ought to know, in the preamble to our nation's constitution, it says that we, the people of the islands of St. Vincent, known as Vincentians, reaffirm that our nation is founded on the belief in the supremacy of God and the freedom and dignity of men and women. Everything which followed subsequently in the Constitution hangs on those words. The reaffirmation by our people, the belief in the supremacy of God and the freedom and dignity of man and woman, that's what this nation is founded upon. Of course, many of us forget it and we have to be reminded about it all the time.
and I'm hoping in these times where we are doing very, very well in some respects, and the young men, some small minority, are engaged in criminal violence, I'm hoping that some of them will come to the convention and sessions because I've always said this and I practiced in the law, the law courts for many, many years before I became prime minister and I can't remember seeing any young men or young women who in the Youth for Christ, who in the choir in the church, who play pan with star lift, who involved in cricket and football in the cadet corps, who do their work at school and don't drop out and follow bad company. I've never seen any of them in front of the law courts. And while I'm talking about some of the young men, the young men have, all of them have mothers and fathers. And the mothers and the fathers have to pay attention to them. You can't not pay attention to them and when they're 14 years old, and you can't go with them anymore. You say, that ain't my problem. That is Ralph's problem. <laughs> well, that is all of us' problem. And for the mothers who sometimes don't think enough about their own role, and fathers. I had a good father, but my mother fathered me. And I want to ask the mothers to make an extra little effort with the boys. Make a little extra effort with the boys for me. I wish you all the best. We are full of optimism and love and caring and fresh hope and faith morning by morning new mercies we see all that we need thy hand has provided great is thy faithfulness thank you very much what a God we serve everybody isn't God wonderful Come on, isn't God wonderful? This is convention. I don't need to do any more protocol, but I honor the Lord this evening for the goodness of God. I want you to stand with me. You can read Bishop Smith's profile in the booklet. But listen to me before he comes to minister to you this evening. When I was in seminary, one of my professors said to me, as a minister of the gospel, if you have more friends that you can number on one hand, you are very, very gracious. Sister Charles and I, for the last maybe 25, 30 years, have had Bishop Smith as personal friend and his family and there's nothing I wouldn't ask this man would do we travel everywhere different places for the gospel he's been here before in our convention you know he was in Lomans last Sunday but I want you to receive the word of the Lord tonight singers grab your microphone one time two time oh be lifted above all other gods we lay our crowns and as they sing that, lift your hands, the atmosphere, people watching us all over, 
the Caribbean, in the UK, everywhere, will be lifted above the. And I said, come on. Just lift your hands and let's worship it. We lay our crowns, come on. And let's worship it. Do it again, oh, be lifted, oh, be lifted. Oh, 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 oh. Be lifted, be lifted above, come on. Above all other gods, we lay our ground. And worship him. And worship Sing, oh, glorious God, sing. Oh, glorious God. Hallelujah. We praise your name. In this house tonight, in this house tonight, we lay, we lay, we lay our crowns. Come on, everybody. Oh, glorious God. Oh, 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 glorious God. He's in this room tonight. He's in this room tonight. And worship. All over the house, lift your hands up. Crowns and just worship in a mama mandona. We lay our crowns, we just lay in a mandona. Oh, somebody just lift up a praise unto Jesus. Come on, Bishop. We lay our crowns. Come on, Bishop. We lay, we lay. We lay, we lay. Oh, we lay our crowns, we lay our crowns. We lay. Come on, let's sing it one more time. We lay our crowns and worship you. And worship you. We lay our crowns and worship you. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hear me, brothers and sisters. Just remain standing with me a moment. I want to greet Bishop Davis, Dr. Charles, First Lady Charles, First Lady Davis, and the protocol has already been established, the Prime Minister and all the guests. I want to just ask you to just focus for two minutes on another dimension of worship. You see, things are established in the realm by us being willing to cry out to God. If you want the fire, you got to cry out for the fire. You know, no one can do your worship for you. No one can do your praying for you. I want for you for the next two minutes, and I'm really going to time you at least two minutes, to just lift your hands to heaven. Come on, lift them up. Come on, help us musicians. Open your mouth and just, just talk to God. Come on, open your mouth. Adabasude be koshudi bi yanda dada yande bodo. Hede be suda yanda bado shudi bi yodo bo yonde be. Rada bukusudi be yondo bo di bi endi bi shinda da. Rada bodo bo sore be yudi bi kude be yonde be yundi bi yanda da. Father, we take authority tonight, God, over every prince of darkness in the atmosphere over Saint Vincent. We arrest the prince of darkness. We arrest principalities and powers, God. We dethrone them in the mighty name of Jesus. And we decree, we declare tonight, your kingdom come, your will be done. We decree tonight, your will be established in this place. You alone be glorified. You alone be lifted up. You be magnified, Jesus. We come against every spirit of darkness, every principalities and powers that 
as rule, oh God. We charge you tonight by the blood of Jesus. Your time is over. Your time is over. We speak the power of the living God. We speak tonight that angels are released from the throne room of God. We speak tonight that angels are released to tear down and to cancel the reign of principalities. Principalities of cancers. Principalities of sickness. Principalities of demonic power that has been released. We come against you and we speak the blood of Jesus. Come on, open your mouth and just give God praise in this place. We praise you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We lift you up, God. We thank you, Lord. Only you can send the fire. Only you can send the anointing. So, God, we speak in this place. We speak fresh anointing. We speak fresh power. We speak that every yoke is destroyed tonight because of the anointing. We give you praise. We give you praise. Come on, lift up both hands and give them the biggest shout of hallelujah you can in this place. Come on, one more time. Hallelujah. Come on, one more time. Hallelujah. One more time in this place. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Amen. Just be seated for a moment. I want to say it is such an honor and a privilege to be here this moment, this time. I have drank a lot of your coconut waters. I've had a whole lot of your sugar cane. And I've enjoyed myself being here. I want to thank Bishop Port as well for taking me around and uh, showing me the different places. I'm going to get to the word of the Lord tonight as we look at rekindling the fire. Someone is helping me with a pull point. You could go ahead and if you, thrill, if you will turn your Bibles with me to Acts chapter 7 verses 22 to 35. Dr. Davis, thank you so much for this esteemed invitation. And Bishop Charles, who is my brother, amen. Give God thanks for your life and your amazing leadership. He's an anointed man of God. St. Vincent should be so, so proud to have this man of God with the influence and the weight and the anointing that he carries in the Church of God internationally. As a matter of fact, he'll be speaking in New York at our camp meeting the first night. And I hope all the Ordain bishops, I'll say this loud, live stream as much as I can. I hope all the Ordain bishops are coming to the General Assembly to vote for him. Because sometimes you just need to vote. And by the way, it's your obligation. I can't tell you who to vote for in your island election, but you should vote as a Christian, all right? So show up at the polls. Amen. Let's look at the word of the Lord tonight, brothers and sisters. Bishop Mohammed, great having you as well. Let me just go directly here. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. And when he was 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him and avenged him that was oppressed and smote the Egyptian. For he supposed his brethren would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them, but they understood not. And the next day he showed himself unto them as they strove and would have set them at one again, saying, Sirs, here are brethren, why do you wrong one to another? 
But he that did his neighbor wrong just him away saying, Who made you a ruler or a judge over us? Wilt thou kill me as thou did the Egyptian yesterday? Then fled Moses at this saying and was a stranger in the land of Midian where he begot two sons. And when 40 years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. When Moses saw it, he wandered up the side. And as he drew near to behold it, the voice of the Lord came unto him saying, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses trembled. Then said the Lord to him, Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for where thou standest is holy ground. Lord, bless your words to your people in Jesus' name. In God's making of his anointed servants, there are no shortcuts. The potter puts the vessel he intends to use to the fire. Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. However, before God could use him, before God could send him, God added to his resume the strengthening power of adversity. Do you know anointing comes through fire? So help me tell your neighbor, neighbor, remember your ABCs. Adversity builds character. So here we encounter Moses. He's learned. Moses was mighty in words, mighty in deeds. The first 40 years of Moses' life, life was filled with purpose and promise. He was learning all the wisdom of the Egyptian, a mighty man. Moses was a graduate of the Harvard of his days. And he was a prince in Egypt. But brothers and sisters, in one single moment, the prince became a wanted prisoner. A prisoner who had to flee to preserve his life. Moses was demoted and demoralized to being a lonely shepherd with some sheep on a mountainside. For 40 years long, he's leading sheep instead of leading people in a palace. His dreams and ambitions are buried in the sand of Egypt. And he has lost hope, he has lost passion, and he's in a wilderness experience. Can I ask you tonight, have you ever been in the wilderness? Hear me tonight. I'm not going to take a whole lot of your time. But no one goes to the wilderness. As a matter of fact, Moses didn't go to the wilderness so he could take photographs of wild plants and pictures of wild flowers. He went to the wilderness to escape the fury of the Pharaoh. David didn't choose the wilderness. He was chased there by King Saul. Jesus didn't choose the wilderness. He was led by the Holy Spirit to be tempted by the devil in the wilderness. You see the problem? People want the fire, but they want to escape the wilderness. Oh, come on, tell your neighbor, neighbor, the wilderness is a part of the journey. You got to go through the wilderness, some through the water, some through the fire. You got to go through the wilderness. And hear me, survival in the wilderness depends on your ability to hear 
to smell, and to navigate. The wilderness sharpens your perception. Oh, come on, just high five someone and tell them the way of the wilderness is the way of greatness. The way of the wilderness is the way of greatness. Hear me, brothers and sisters. It's in the wilderness that we learn solitude and silence. It's in the wilderness that David learned to fight. Oh, can you look at someone and tell them I killed my first bear in the wilderness. I killed my first lion in the wilderness. Oh, can I tell you, I wrote my first song in the wilderness for an audience of one. It was just me and God when I was inspired to write. The wilderness produces great people. There is greatness in the wilderness. Oh, somebody give God praise for the wilderness. The wilderness refine and redesign your life. Hear me. You got to welcome the wilderness because the wilderness has a way of upgrading you. Oh, come on. Somebody give God thanks for the wilderness. I thank him for the valley. I thank him for the mountains. I thank him for the storms he brought me through. Moses is in the wilderness for 40 long years. Can you imagine? He left Egypt at 40. He is now 80 years old. It is as if his life is over. Who do I come to tell it's not over yet? My God, my God. Who do I come to tell? I don't care what the devil might, might tell you. It's not over yet. I don't, oh my God. I don't care what the doctor told you. It's not over yet. I don't care what voices you might be here shouting at you. It's not, oh come on, stand up on your feet and take 30 seconds and lift your hands to heaven and give God praise for your breakthrough for it's not over yet. Somebody give him praise in this place. After 40 long years, hope gone. Dreams abandoned, but all of a sudden, one day in the wilderness, the fire showed up. Oh, who do I come to tell tonight? God will find you wherever you are. The fire will find you wherever you are. Come on, PowerPoint, you got to flow with me. The fire showed up in the wilderness. Hear me tonight, God sent me to tell someone to get ready, to get ready because the fire is about to show up in your life again. Hear me, I know for certain that the fire of God is about to show up in the nations of the world again. Oh, hear me, St. Vincent. I don't care what the economy look like. I'm here to tell you the fire of God is about to show up on your island again. Oh, get, 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 get ready for the fire of God. You might have lost your passion and your purpose, but the fire is about to show up in your life. There might be sickness in your body. Body, but the fire brings healing. You might have lost your joy, but the fire will bring joy and speakable and full of glory. Or oh, somebody give him praise in this place. Come on, come on, help me for a moment. Get up out of your seat, get up out of your seat and just squeeze about three persons' hand. You got to do this because it is prophetic. Say, neighbor. The fire will find you in spite of your location, in spite of your situation, in spite of your condition. The fire will find you. The fire will find you. God knows your location. He knows your address. He knows what you're going through. 
Oh, somebody give him praise in this place. Oh, can I get your help for a moment? I dare you lift your hands and say, fire, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, give him praise in this place. Oh, Basada, come on, give him praise in this place. My God, my God, my God. Can I show you something? Here is what the Bible tells us. And when the Lord saw that he turned towards the fire, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and Moses said, here am I. Come on. Just help me for a moment. Say, neighbor, there is something attractive about the fire. Something stunning. Oh, come on, help me say, neighbor, there is something stunning. There is something startling. There is something arresting. There is something captivating about the fire. The more you get the fire, the more fire you want. The more you get of Jesus, the more of him you want. Moses said to himself, I've got to get closer to the fire. I don't know about you, Bishop Charles, my deepest concern is to get closer to the fire. I'm, I'm 61 years old. You might think that's young. You might think that's old. I don't care about position. I don't even care what people think no more. My only care is to get to the fire. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died, to seek him and to find him and the desire of seeking him more and finding him more. Where are the men and women of God of this century who will God will so clothe with power and anointing that they will turn the world upside down come on lift your hands to the Lord help me get closer I have a feeling that your way out of your wilderness is connected to the fire. I have a feeling that your answers to your circumstances, they are just linked, linked to the fire. Aren't you tired of talking to your girlfriend? It's time to get closer to the fire. The questions you need answers for, you will find them in the fire. God's direction for your life will come from the fire. I'm trying my best not to take a whole lot of time, but hear me. I migrated from Jamaica as a 17-year-old boy. Moved to New York without mother or father. And hear me, young people, this is for you. Every time I got to an intersection of my life, I wasn't sure I should go left or right. I said, Father, you're the only daddy I have right now. What do I do? Where do I go? And God would give divine direction that would launch me from one success to the next success. And people wonder, how did this happen to you? Oh, tell your neighbor, it happened because of the fire. When you're connected to the fire, there is a voice that speaks from the fire.
Come on, help me. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, God's GPS for your future is in the fire. Say, Lord, speak to me from the fire. Here is what the Bible tells us. When Moses turned towards the fire, God called his name. This is so significant because something was happening. And this something caught his attention. But he was willing to turn towards God. There are too many people who are not willing to turn towards God. They want to do their own thing, but they want God to bless their thing. But if you want God's blessing, you got to be so overcome and consumed with who God is that you turn towards God. When he turned towards God, that's when God spoke to him. You cannot Ignore the sight of God and expect to hear the voice of God. So I, I don't want to meddle. But when the Holy Spirit wake you up to sleep and you to pray and you go back to sleep. Say ouch. Hear me, hear me tonight. You cannot ignore the sight of God and expect to hear God's voice because God, man, God leads from one point to the next. God doesn't give all the instructions at the beginning of the journey. It's when you get closer that I'm, I'm saying it's for somebody tonight that God gives more instruction. God said, Abraham, it's one of those mountains, but he doesn't know which mountain it is until he got in the vicinity where God had a plan for his life. Come on, lift your hands and say, Lord, here am I. I got to run on. The fire sanctify places and people. Here is the first thing that God said, him, said to him. Don't come any closer. Take your shoes off your feet. For the place where you are standing is holy ground. Hear me. The fire is a sanctifying agent. Oh, I got to say that one more time. The fire is a sanctifying agent. The fire will show up and sanctify a place and the fire will show up and sanctify people. Oh, can I tell you, in case you never know, this is holy ground. You're standing on holy ground for the Lord is here and where he is, is holy. This is holy ground. I dare you declare this is holy ground. This is holy atmosphere. This is a holy convention. This is God's business and God's business is holy. Imagine, brothers and sisters, God himself declared over a spot, a location. This is holy ground. Because God's present sanctifies places and sanctifies people. In Genesis 28, Jacob found himself in a location where he put his head down to sleep. The Bible tells us he took a rock for this pillow. Can you imagine a man is between a rock and a hard place sleeping on a stone as a pillow but as he lay his head down to sleep he had a vision. He saw heaven open. Angels ascending and descending and he said surely this is the house of God. God is in this place and I knew it not but hear me brothers and sisters that place was constant 
consecrated. That place was set apart because before he was ever born, his grandfather Abraham had been to that location. He had prayed in that location. He had interceded in that location. He had travailed in that location and his prayer opened a portal in Bethel. An open portal was already established because somebody prayed. How do we make this applicable? Your house ought to be holy ground. I, I got to let you know the truth. Your house ought to be a sacred place. And we're missing what God wants to do because we allow everything in our house. Your children should not watch any and everything. Your house is a portal. Oh, you know what? I want to show you. When your house becomes sacred and dedicated to God, angels ascend from heaven to your home. Angels ascend up. Angels come back with blessing because your home is an open. Come on, lift your hands and say, Lord, I declare my house an open portal to heaven. Where angels ascend and where angels descend. Lord, my house is an open portal. Hear me tonight. God is in this place. Come on, help me tell your neighbor, God is in this place. Come on, one more time, God is in this place. Come on, say it one more time, God is in this place. Can I show you something deeper than that? You see, that's where church folks miss it. We are so sure that God is in this place. So when we walk to the door, we just left God in this place. Can I take you deeper? God is in this place. Come on, hit yourself on the chest. God is in this place. If you're born again, if you repent of your sins, if you made Jesus your Lord and Savior, I got good news for you. The Bible says it pleased God to adopt you in his family and his Holy Spirit comes and live inside of you. Know he not that he are the temple of the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God dwells inside. Oh, come on. Hit yourself one more time and declare God is in this place. Do you know who lives inside of you? The Holy Ghost. You talk about being power packed, fire filled. That's who you ought to be because the Holy Ghost, come on, declare, the Holy Spirit lives inside of me. The fire of God sanctify places and sanctify people. Let me run on here. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne high and lifted up and his train filled the temple above it stood the seraphims and each had six wings with two their cover their face with two their feet and with two they flew and one cried unto another saying Holy, holy, holy 
is the Lord of hosts. I got to stop to talk to you a minute. You know what the church is not experiencing? Deeper, greater, manifested glory and presence of God. I got to tell you the truth. We have become very irreverent. The church has become irreverent to the presence of the precious Holy Spirit. We treat our neighbors better than we treat God sometimes. And the Holy Spirit shows up where he is honored and respected where he is reverent and he is honored as holy. You can be in church so long that you become too familiar with God. There, there, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Bishop. There are too much religious people who are not even Christians in church. They are just religious. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. But if they have a bellyache, they, they, they make sure they find their pastor because they can't pray for themselves. I'm telling you the truth. Can I, can I show you something? Cherubim and seraphims they are involved in the worship of Jehovah. They are around the throne of God. They are involved in worship. Look at their, look at the way they worship. Look at their posture. They have six wings. Two they use to cover their feet because of the awesomeness of God. They will not be in God's presence without their feet being covered. Because of the glory of God, they cover their face for God is so holy. He's so glorious. He's so splendid. He's so beautiful. He's altogether lovely. He's amazing. He's awesome. He's king of kings. He's Lord of lords. He's the governor of the universe. And honey, though these angels dwell in the presence of God, they are so impressed by God. They are so impressed by God. Look, look what these angels do. They look at each other and they run to each other. Holy, holy. And they run to another person. Holy, holy. These angels who live in the presence of God, they are still impressed by God. Hear me. If you want to see God's anointing, if you want to see God's power manifested in your life, you got to learn how to get up and lift your hands and give him praise. How to shout. How to worship him. For he's worthy. I said he's worthy. I said he's worthy. Jehovah is worthy. Shakadi bo yunda baba. Honey, what's happening in the body of Christ today? It's abnormal. Forgive me. When pastors sleep with their parishioners, it's abnormal. I'm, I'm sorry. I leave early in the morning back to New York. When pastors have 
girlfriends in the church? It's abnormal. It's corruption. It's sin. It's evil. It's contamination. How on earth can you cast out the very devil that you slept with last night? And here is what the church needs. Isaiah said when he encountered Oh, Yadabad. When he encountered the presence of God, and the, the Lord just dropped in my spirit that there are some women in the churches, stop pushing yourself upon the man of God. The devil is a liar. You don't talk to his wife, but you're always in his face. Hear me. The manifestation of the presence of God begins with holiness, with sanctification. In a house, there are vessels of honor and dishonor. If any man will sanctify himself, if who? Man mean both man and woman. If any person will what? It's not the Holy Ghost alone who sanctify. If a person will sanctify themselves, then they will be a vessel of honor set apart, used for the master's use. My God, my God. When Isaiah... Oh, God of mercy. When Isaiah encountered the glory and the holiness of God, when in his vision he saw how the angel responded to the glory of God, Isaiah cried out, Woe is me. For I am undone. And the Bible said, because, don't miss this, don't miss this. You can never change, this is so crucial, unless you have a desire to change. If you love your sin, God can't change you. God doesn't have the power over your free will. You got to be willing to give up fornication. Yes, I just said so. You got to be willing to give up adultery. God cannot override your free will. You, you got to want to get rid of the frogs in your life. You, you know about the plagues of Egypt, right? The frogs took over Egypt. And Pharaoh is annoyed by the frogs. So he called for Moses. And he said, Moses, if you get rid of the frogs, I will let the people go. And Moses looked at Pharaoh. When should I ask the Lord to take the frogs away? And Pharaoh looked at Moses and said, Tomorrow. 
Help me, help me. Look your neighbor dead in the eyes, please. Look your neighbor in the eye, please. Say, neighbor, why would you sleep with the frogs one more night? If you make a decision to continue living in sin, you're sleeping with the frogs because it literally, it literally means evil powers, evil spirits. And I don't have time to talk about that. Because you open your heart and the devil will take more than you give him. And you reach a place where you can't even repent because you're taken over by evil spirits. You have lost control. My God. Isaiah reached a point where he wanted a change. Come on, lift your hands and say, Lord change me Lord oh say change me Lord tonight God I desire a change I desire an encounter I'm willing to lay down my pride my selfishness my sins and I'm willing to put on new garments of holiness and righteousness Hear me, brothers and sisters. God allow the angels. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Man, I'm trying to, I'm trying to move on. Because, hear me. I've seen this over and over. I go places where people are possessed by demon, de demonic spirit. And if they don't want to be delivered, I don't care who you are. I don't care how much you pray for them. They will not be freed. They first must have a desire to be free. You must want freedom. Because of Isaiah's desire to be free, the Bible tells us that God gave the command, the angels, don't miss this, took the coal, live coal, from the altar of God and placed it upon his life and instantly he was set free bondage broke off his life God will still put the coals oh can I got can I have 10 people tonight say Lord send the coals of fire upon my life send the fire my God I see it in the spirit I don't know but I see it in the spirit tonight I see fire I literally see fire I literally see coals of fire falling upon this house tonight say Lord Lord, send coals of fire upon my life. Purge me, God. Take away my sins. Take away my iniquity. I just got to follow God. Here's what God is saying. Look at me a moment. God wants me to tell you your greatest worship is not how well you sing. Your greatest worship is not even your offering. I'm sorry to say that. Your greatest worship is not even how much money you give. 
God says to tell you tonight, St. Vincent, your greatest offering is, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind and you shall prove the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. My God, who do I come to tell if you serve God in truth and righteousness? Sickness can't keep you. The devil can't keep you. Demonic power that will break off of you because there is a presence and an anointing that's greater than darkness. Oh, somebody need to get up and just shake off the past. 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 Stand up with me over this place. Stand up with me over this place. Stand up, come on, just stand with me. Stand over this place. Don't give in to the ways of the world. I don't care who is doing it. If God said don't, it's for your protection, for your holiness, it's for your health and your healing. The ways of God are always best. Here is what my God, I just got to try and wrap this up. Here's what it all. If you don't have to, don't move. And don't get distracted. Here's what an old songwriter wrote. He said, we don't sing these songs no more. He penned the song, Is Your All? On the altar of sacrifice laid. Your heart does the spirit control. You can only be blessed. Ay, 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 oh. And have peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body and soul. Have you longed for sweet peace and for faith to increase and as earnestly, fervently prayed but you cannot have rest nor be perfectly blessed until all <laughs> until all is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Your all does the spirit control. You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest when you lead him, your body and soul. The songwriter goes on, would you walk with the Lord in the light of his word and have peace and contentment always? You must do his sweet will to be free from all ill 
and the altar your all must lay oh we never can know what the Lord will bestow of the blessing for which we have prayed till our body and soul he does fully control is your all oh da ba sa da ba kudo bo yende de Here's what I want to do. Here's what I want to do. I want to call. I want to call all of us to repentance. Just real softly. I'm going to give you a chance to sing it, but I want everyone to come forward. Everyone, 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 come, come. If you want to get rid of all the frogs out of your life, say, God, tonight, take my ugly frogs. Come on, come on, stand in the aisle if you can't make it up here, but leave your seat. Leave your seat as an action of obedience. Come on, leave your seat down there. Come on, come on. If you want it, come, come, come. Look at me a moment. Look at me a moment. Look at me. Look at me. Look direct me in my eyes. You see, this is not in my notes. But here's what the Lord said. Isaac and Abraham parallel the father and the son. God and Jesus. Bishop, the Lord just reminded me as Abraham traveled with Isaac, Isaac said, Father, here is the wood and here is the fire. But where is the offering? You are the offering. God says to tell you, you are the offering. God says you are the offering. Your body, your soul, and your spirit, that's the offering that God wants. And if you give God your love, your heart, God will send the fire upon your life. The fire of purification, the fire of holiness, the fire of blessing, the fire of provision, the fire of his anointing. Just the keyboard, just the keyboard, just the keyboard. Come on, close your eyes. I want for you just to ask God's mercy and forgiveness upon your life. Upon your life. For your family. Go ahead. No silent prayer. Come on. Talk to God. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. It's established in the atmosphere. Come on. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. 
You're going to see what happened. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. You know those things that weigh you down. Tonight it stops. Tonight is your deliverance. Tonight is your night of breakthrough. You know that besetting sin. You know that thing that you have been trying to shake from your life. God says tonight as you confess it, as you cry out to him for mercy and forgiveness, he forgives. He breaks the power of the tempter. Oh, yada shanda da busude be yokuda da. Go ahead, go ahead. It sounds good to the Father. The Father is listening. My God, my God. Ay, 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 ay. Touch, shabode. Shadabode, be, da, ba, bo, de, be, bu, ya. Adabodo, bo, sunda, da. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, come on, come on, come on, come on, push a little more, 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 come on, push a little more. God, we cry out in repentance, God. I cry out on the behalf of this island, St. Vincent. God, have mercy upon us. Restore us to yourself. God, we repent of our stubborn ways. We repent, God, of every work of the flesh. And, oh, God, we ask for your mercies. We ask for your visitation, that your hands would be outstretched towards us one more time. Against you and you alone, we have sinned. But, God, you're merciful. You're slow to anger. You're plenteous in your forgiveness. Heal us, God. Heal our land. God, I see in the realm of the spirit, the spirit of immorality and sexual perversion, and I break it down. We defeat as adversary of perversion and sexual immorality. We dethrone the powers of darkness. And God, we establish righteousness, holiness, mercy, forgiveness, love, peace, Come on, just pray with me, Lord Jesus. Come on, say, Lord Jesus, tonight I confess my sins and the sins of this nation. God, I ask for your mercies, for your kind and compassionate. Lord, have mercy upon me. Lord, I lift up my family before you. Father God, by the blood of Jesus and in the name of Jesus I break every generational curse I break, I break, I break every generational curse and I sprinkle your blood over my life now you got to transition with me you got to transition with me. The Holy Ghost belongs to everyone. Every single person. It is abnormal if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost. Because you can't live this life by your strength, nor by your own power. I know what's going to happen. The Holy Ghost is going to bring your language you have never spoken before. And you got to open your mouth. Don't resist and let the anointing flow through you. Hear me, brothers and sisters. When Moses went to Mount Sinai, fire came from heaven to earth. On the day of Pentecost, 
suddenly there came upon them cloven tongues of fire God baptized us with the Holy Ghost and with fire come on lift your hands to heaven play the video for me lift your hands to heaven lift your hands to heaven open your mouth and just start worshiping him thank him for the gift God, it's yours come on thank him for the gift thank him for the gift I need some help I need some help as the Lord allow be filled my God God has something with you young lady be filled with the spirit yes out of your belly rivers rivers of living water be filled with the spirit be filled like the rushing of a mighty wind like the rushing of a mighty wind be filled with the flower be filled with the flow be filled be filled be filled be filled Shada bodo bo yunda be filled out of your belly out of your belly rivers of living water like a river when it overflow like the rushing of a mighty wind come on come on be filled be filled be filled be filled be filled be filled come on open up your spirit be filled be filled be filled be filled
break every stronghold of darkness. Return to sender. Every demonic power is assigned against her. Broken in Jesus' name. Five minutes. Aya da da bu da da. Hear me. One, one, one moment. Hear me. Hear me, my brothers and sisters. God never intend for you to lose. God has no intention for you to lose. In God's mind, you are a winner. Here is the problem. You cannot fight without the fire. And every individual born again saint got to have their own fire. For out of your belly there shall flow rivers of living waters. My God, I got to quickly do this. Moses encountered the fire because he had to face Pharaoh. Come on, lift your hands with me and say, Lord, every Pharaoh in my life must die. Principalities of darkness and destroys every Pharaoh. Hear me tonight. Life, life without the fire is ineffective. Can, can, can I show you something? I, I didn't plan to go so long. Samson was born in the fire, but he compromised, and I'm not even going to talk about that. But look at this. God's going to use you, young lady. God's going to use you in such a mighty way. Oh, God, so glorious. Samson's, don't, don't miss this. Come up here, come. Make your way up here. You, you, in a glass, come. Samson's father-in-law took his wife and gave her to another man. Hear me a moment. Samson's father-in-law took his wife and gave her to marry another man. You know, he went to the Philistines and got a wife. When Samson found out, he was so upset. You know what? You know what? The devil can hold on to your stuff because you're not mad enough. Some of you need to get some holy anger. Bishop Stevens, the Bible said, Samson went, please, please, please hear me here. Samson went, man of God, and got 
300 foxes. And he tied them together tail by tail, two by two. 300 foxes. And then he lit their tails with fire and let them go in the Philistines harvest field and burn it down. The foxes could not destroy the harvest unless he had lit their tails with fire. God wants to light your tail with fire tonight. How does it make sense? Jesus in Luke 10 sent his disciples out two by two. He said, behold, I give you power. Somebody say power. Power, power over all the pharaohs in your life. Power over your Red Seas. Power over all the powers of the enemy. Here's what I want you to do. I'm just about turning over. Tell somebody fight from the fire. Tell somebody fight from the fire. Grab somebody's hands. One person, grab your both hands. One person, grab both hands. Man, I'm pairing you up like a fox tonight. I'm pairing you up like Jesus did. Two by two. Baba you de bodo bo sunda baba ba yanda. Come on, start praying for that person. Come on, start praying for that person. Start praying for that person. Light that fire, light that fire. Rekindle that fire, rekindle that fire. Oh, let it burn, let it burn, let it burn. Rekindle that fire. Up on my sons and my daughters, my servant and my handmaid. I will pour out fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire. Fresh fire. I will pour out in those days. Fire, fire, Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost anointed, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire. Shada da 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 da, shada da da do de.
Come on, lift those hands to the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift those hands up to the Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's, let's do this tonight. Right where you are, just, just stay where you are. Lift your hands to the Father. What has happened in this room tonight? He provided the fire. You provide a sacrifice. Young people, elders, there's an anointing in this room. The theme of the convention must not fall to the ground. One of the part of the text that you heard tonight, Elijah, he told him, rebuild the altar, put the wood in order. And then he prayed. You have dedicated yourselves. Without the music, everybody without the music, without the music, just before you leave it tonight. My Jesus, I love you. Tell him. For thee, of sin, lift your hands and say, My gracious, yes, come on, lift your voices and sing it, my Savior. Yes, yes, yes. Tell him, if ever I love thee. My Jesus is now. We're leaving here. Give me the next verse. Lift your voices and sing, I love thee. Come on, lift your voices and sing it. Thou hast forced to love me. Come on, church. Oh, hallelujah. And porches and porches. The sacrifice is on the altar. Hallelujah. On Calvary's tree. Singing to him, said, I love thee. Oh, I love thee. I love thee. I love thee. I love thee. My God, hear the voice of the Lord. If ever I loved Him, Hallelujah! Give me the next verse and then raise your voices and raise this level. Come on, sing! I love Him in life. Come on, I love. Here's the sacrifice on the altar. Here's the sacrifice. Somebody raise your hands and say, I'll praise thee. Do it right now. Hallelujah. Woo. Somebody raise your hands and sing. And say when that do. And say when that do. My God, please.
If ever I love thee, if ever I love thee. Somebody. My Jesus, my Jesus. In mansions of glory, last verse, in mansions of glory. Oh, in mansions of glory. Hallelujah. Makapo, shadamama mandela. The sacrifice is on the altar. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes. I see. Ever I love thee. In hold on in sweet silence, lift those hands up. If I just love my Jesus. I'm going to ask you to do something. If you can take at least an hour, if each of us can take about an hour tomorrow, sometimes, what is your lunch hour? Fast your lunch hour. If all of us in this room would fast our lunch hour tomorrow and say, if ever I love you, Jesus, I want the fire. And you come tomorrow night, don't come the same way. Come with a level of expectancy. This is a different convention this year. Don't let nobody put nothing in your air. And tell you foolishness. Don't tell about time. Don't don't. This is this is that you had a hungry for the fire. And if you can ask God, young people, everybody, whatever it is, and I'm going to say to you, if there's an interruption in what God, in, in in natural program, we're going to flow in the Holy Ghost. Does anybody hear me? So if you're on the program tomorrow and the Holy Ghost takes over this place, please don't get upset. Because we want the fire. Is anybody hear me? Is anybody hear me? Each of you tonight, you're going to have a safe journey home. Doesn't matter how far you have to go. Every bus driver, every van driver, every car driver, every foot walking person, every area you have to go, every little hill you have to go down with your light, you will be safe. You will be safe in Jesus' name. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And if there's one person in here tonight who said, Bishop Charles, I want to give my heart to Christ. Right where you are, at the altar call, but just raise your hand and say, pray for me. Anybody that tonight, just say, pray for me. Is there's one person, anybody, just raise your hand and say, pray for me right where you are. God bless you, sir. Anybody else? Anybody else? Somebody got somebody. Thank you, young lady. Thank you, young lady. Thank you back there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, lady over there. Can I ask you to do this? We're going to pray for you right now. But can I ask you to come back tomorrow night? And before you go, see one of the pastors. Where, 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 are, the, where are the leaders? Where are the walkers? Somebody wave your hand at me. So where, 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 the, where, the, where are the walkers? somebody see one of these pastors before you leave come see one of these people 
and said, I'm giving my heart to Christ. Lift up, Father God. Everybody pray this prayer with me. Say, Father God, in Jesus' name, thank you for salvation tonight. Those of you raise your hand, help them everybody. Say, I repent of my sin. I turn from sin. Tonight I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And from this night, I believe I am washed, I'm cleansed, and right now I am saved by the blood of Jesus. My sins are gone, and I'm free in Jesus' name. Would you clap your hands? Let's give God praise. Listen, listen. Call somebody, call them a friend. Bring them to church with you. Don't come by yourself. Let this place be overflowing. And as a matter of fact, all weekend long, let us have every single person you can have. Bring them out for the glory of God. God bless you. Amen. You can go back to your seat. We're going home, but just while you're going back to your seat and we're dismissing. Hallelujah. Let me borrow a word from, a phrase from Bishop Smith. Don't sleep with the frogs tonight. Get them destroyed. Tomorrow night we're back here. Tonight, tonight we just lay the wood in place. Tomorrow night we're going to be rekindling the fire. So we want to invite you back tomorrow night, same time, 7 o'clock. And like Bishop Trasse, spend time tomorrow in prayer and fasting. Your lunch hour, whatever hour you have. And we come tomorrow night anticipating what the Lord is going to be doing. Friday night we're back here. And Sunday morning, Sunday morning it's going to be at Victoria Park. And just to let you know, those of your vehicles, um, the Anglican car park has been given to us to park that day free of charge. Okay, so you can, be, you can park in the Anglican car park on Sunday morning. And free of charge, Bishop Friday and the dean of the church has given consent that you can part there Sunday morning at no cost, no charge. God bless you as you get home safe. See you tomorrow in the will of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You're dismissed until tomorrow's night. Hallelujah. The grace of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit continue to be with you and rest upon you and watch over you in Jesus' name until we meet again. Hallelujah.